Hello YouTube, I'm back again um, with an addition to the system. I recently um, purchased and just received the a, an Insupra, that's uh, E-N-S-U-P-R-A, I believe, Insupra grid tie inverter. And I went directly to their website and I saw it and I went ahead and purchased it. This is a 500 watt grid tie inverter uh, with a DC input voltage between 15 volts and 60 volts DC. And uh, it's a very small model and so forth. Again, 500 watts. And, you know, if you look on the back here, it has some uh, very nice LED readouts and so forth. Now, I've searched the web and I saw different customer reviews and so forth um, with this particular uh, inverter. And, you know, there were some good, some bad, some indifferent. Uh, well, just say good, some good and some bad. And I decided to take a look at it for myself. Um, the reason I got another inverter, uh, another grid tie inverter is, um, you know, I, with the excess energy, you know, why not? I'll just add another one and, you know, just uh, pump the excess energy that's not going into my battery, you know, pump it back into the house. And since I'm going to tie this one directly to the panel so that I don't have to babysit it, um, you know, so right now I have this 600 or 500 watt grid tie inverter. I will have I have also this 600 watt grid tie inverter, which is which will be uh, which is tied to this particular switch, and this 500 watt grid tie inverter, which is tied to this switch. Now I have another switch that I bought for this particular inverter. So I'm hoping to get you know with a combined uh, you know input wattage into the house. Of at least three or four hundred watts, at least three or four hundred watts with the with the um, uh, setup that I have. Um, now, naturally, I'm not going to get the full, you know, six hundred watts with this, or I don't get the full five hundred watt with my other, even though it's tied directly to the batteries, because you know these things are not the most efficient. But you know, it's worth a shot. Now, there have been other reviews um, again with this with this type of inverter, you know some bad reviews or and so forth but what I'm going to do is I am going to look at it for myself and you know with an unbiased eye and you know I will either say it's good or bad this is a you know it's a product it, this you know it's either good or it's, or it's bad it's not a reflection uh, of the human beings that made the product <laughs> okay well in this case I'm not going to badmouth the people I'm just going to say the product is either good or it's bad and so forth and I just make my recommendation and, you know, and you, the viewer, can make up your own mind whether or not it's worth it or not, you know. And, you know, I just, just like watching a movie. Hey, the movie was either good or it was bad. But anyway, this is, uh, you know, this is an super good time inverter. Um, it's pretty standard. It's small. And, uh, you know, there's two fuses on the front here. Uh, they're both 30 amp fuses. It has the standard positive and negative terminals uh, with a computer fan. Um, it's lightweight. Again, it's pretty small. If you look at my hand here, it's pretty small, uh, pretty thin. Um, so it should fit up on the wall, you know, quite nicely. Um, other than that, it's just a standard grid tie inverter. Um, I've already tested it out, you know, kind of, you know, briefly, and it works. It, it works. Um, but, you know, the real test is how does it react under full sun? Okay, YouTube, we'll see you again. Take care. Hello YouTube, I'm back again, and uh, what I want to do this time is kind of finish up my review of the Insupra 500 watt grid tie inverter. Um, again, as, as I suggested, this is a, an Insupra grid tie inverter. It takes about 15, between 15 and 60 volts DC as input power, and um, it's 500 watts, and it's made by a company called, Ins or, or sold by a company called Insupra. And according to the data sheet that they sent me and this particular label, it's supposed, it's supposed to be um, CE registered or uh, certified. Um, it's not a big unit. It's actually, you know, looking at my finger there, it's pretty, it's pretty slim, um, you know, really slimline type of a unit. And, um, you know, it's uh, small, okay, really compact. And it's a little different than um, than the other units, and one in one way is that with the original, with the, well, the ones we see on YouTube and so forth, they have these LEDs right here that you know that indicate some activity. 
with the Insupra units, the LEDs are in a totally different format there. Um, you can see the, uh, the red LED uh, like right in the middle going up and down. That's the activity light. The other two uh, green LEDs uh, simply says, you know, one's either 120 volt, uh, putting in 120 volts or 230 volts or something like that. The other green uh, LED up at the top, it just says that it's 60 hertz. Um, and so right now there's some activity going on. And so that's, that's one of the primary differences. Also, this particular unit comes with an on and off switch. Okay, it comes with an on and off switch. Um, so far, it's performing okay. It's not terribly efficient. Um, I think I get about maybe 50 or 60% efficiency out of it. But it's okay. I'm not really stressing over it. Um, just to want to be fair. Um, you know, maybe, uh, you know, my panels are on the roof and they're supposed to be about, um, you know, uh, 270 watts, but, you know, in all fairness, that's if everything was perfect, okay? And, you know, just to kind of get an idea, okay, um, what I'm getting uh, from these panels, I'm getting about 132 watts out of them, or 130, something like that. And so, you know, if, if I did some calculations, you know, they would come up to be about maybe a little over, maybe a little over 50, almost 60%, but maybe a little, just a little over 50% efficiency. Um, and, you know, granted, it's, you know, my panels are not in the most perfect position, but, you know, I still believe these things are not as efficient as, as people say they are. But this one here is, it's not bad. Um, I, when I opened up the box, you know, I shook it up and down. And, you know, there was nothing rattling and so forth. And it, it seems like a pretty solid unit, okay. Um, you know, it's actually, I believe it may be a little more solid. This one here is, is about 60% efficient. Um, you know, I did some calculations on it. And w w the panels that are hooked to this particular system, I have a little more control over as far as move maneuvering them. And I can say, yeah, about s between just a little over 60% efficient with this. And on these, on this one here, just a little over 50%. Now, but when I put both of these together, okay, and run them together, you know, I can get about 422 watts, okay. Now, I have 670 watts of panels. That's under you know, ideal conditions. Um, so, in reality, maybe between 600 and 650. Um, so, if you took, you know, 421 divided by 650, it kind of gives you a, a combined uh, overall efficiency uh, of, of what I'm pulling in from both of these grid ties. Now, again, in all fairness, it, it was a, it's a good system. I think it's a good grid tie, you know, for what for what you pay for it, and I believe, you know, between the two, I'd rather go with this one. It looks a little more sturdier and, um, you know, than, than this one here. And at least they attempt to say the thing is, is CE certified. And, you know, I can't say it's true or false. You know, I have to take people at their word, um, you know, that it's CE certified. So at least they, you know, they made the attempt. And, you know, right now these things do get warm. They do get warm, okay. However, I, to mitigate that or, you know, decrease the risk of these things overheating, you can buy one of these RV fans from Walmart or any auto parts store for about $12. And they work great. You know, I just take it, they clip on, you know, I got a little table there. I just, you know, clip it on close to the uh, unit itself, tilt it up, you know, at a, at a nice decent angle. And, you know, the air is blowing directly on it, okay. And it works fine. I also have another fan that I have blowing directly on this particular unit. So these things, you know, the air is blowing underneath and around the unit, and there's a fan blowing hot air out from outside of the unit. So these things, they they stay quite cool. Okay, they with these fans, computer fans work fine. They work fine. They work fine. But these RV fans, they actually put out a lot more air. Okay, a lot more cubic feet of air. And they work, they work great, uh, great to keep these, these units cool. And um, this particular unit here, I mean, it gets warm, but with this fan, it's a non-issue. It's a non-issue. Uh, but again, I just wanted to give a, re give a review. Would I, would I recommend this particular Insupra unit to uh, someone else? Yes, I would. Um, you know, it, it works. 
Um, you know, none of these things. I don't, you know, I don't really care what you buy, really. They say, well, this is, you know, such and such efficient, you know, 70, 80, 90% efficient. All of that depends on, number one, what type of panels you got. Two, where those panels are positioned. And three, what's the atmospheric conditions on the outside? Is it a sunny day? Is it a cloudy day? You know, and so forth. And what's the temperature of the panels? I mean, really, you know, these things are, you know, it's hard to say, you know, to have a hard, fast number because everybody's situation may be different. Your panels, you know, you may be in a different part of the country, okay? In the, in the middle of winter, on a nice, clear, you know, sunny day in the middle of winter, yeah, you probably get better numbers. Uh, but when I recommend this unit, this Insupra, E-N-S-U-P-R-A, in super, you can go to their website. I bought it directly from the website. I I really don't trust eBay too much because uh, you know people they burn get burned really bad on eBay. But if you go directly to the website, you know, and order it, then you come out, you know, you have a better chance. But anyway, would I recommend this? Yeah, I would. I mean, it's it's a pretty decent unit. I have no problem with it at all. Um, you know, there was nothing rattling around on the inside when I unboxed it. Um, and with a fan, it'll stay cool. And, you know, bottom line is I'm putting, you know, 411 watts back into uh, my home. And, you know, my battery bank, it, you know, with my uh, Magnum, MagnaSign uh, inverter, inverter charger, I mean, my batteries are fully charged. So, you know, what I'm getting is the, it, this is the excess, <laughs> the excess. I looked at my meter, it's going slow. You know, I still have my little water heater that I got to contend with and maybe some other things. Um, but, you know, it's going pretty slow. 400, 421 watts going back into the house per hour. That's that's not bad, you know, 411 now. But, you know, obviously it's going to fluctuate. So I would recommend this uh, to someone else. Okay, take care, you two.